Hey YouTube, Bones on Campus. I thought I would tell you a little story about dealing with the flood. I went home last summer for vacation, visit the folks, and flew in to a city that was flooded. And my dad's house was in an evacuation zone, so you couldn't get to the neighborhood even. Um, he, we were lucky in this, the house didn't flood from the river, but we did have sewage backup. But I was home for a little over a week, and we couldn't get down to the house till I was almost gone. But in dealing with all of that, we had the city had the water contaminated uh, from, for some reason or another. So you couldn't drink the water. So you had an entire city where you couldn't drink the water. Well, this this brings up this brings up different problems. Drinking water for one, cooking, washing, cleaning, all of this is problematic. So I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about how we dealt with that. Well, first, dealing with the regular everyday stuff. Um, since you can't really wash dishes because the water is not clean, we use things like paper plates, paper towels, a um, bunch of you know plastic paper cups, and of course, Mr. Plastic silverware. The idea for all this is that you could pitch everything, and you wouldn't have to do any dishes. Also, use things like cooking in aluminum with aluminum foil, um, things like stuff that wouldn't make dishes. So kind of like camping, kind of like uh, tailgating. Everything you were doing, easily easy to throw away, easy to clean up. So say say you do that, you eat, you eat supper or whatever, and well, eventually you're going to have to wash your hands or something. So what do you do? I mean, you wash your hands, get water, you use soap and everything, and you still have all the germs from the contaminated city water, all the sewage, whatever. So, stuff like this became your friend. And this big bottle, it is a 40-ounce bottle of Germex hand sanitizer. This was four bucks. And if you look at one of my other videos, you see it helped make fire, too. So, another great thing baby wipes. Make sure you get the ones that have no smell. These are fragrance free, um, hyper energetic, and these say they're alcohol free and they have aloe in them, but you can w wipe your hands off, clean them, and you don't have to get, you don't have to use water. So that kind of stuff made things invaluable. So by the time we finally got down to the house, we had, I don't know, about three foot of muck in our basement. Got sump pump, started pumping that out. Generators are your friend. Without them, we wouldn't be able to pump out our house or the neighbor's basement. So, we're dealing with stuff, and you can't, don't want to touch everything, so get hip boots, get knee boots, waders, taking stuff out, bagging it up, throwing it away. I mean, we emptied the house before the flood came, but there was still a bunch of stuff down there that was just nasty and dirty. And to tear drywall out and redo the whole basement, all that stuff is gross. So things like gloves, simple, get a whole bunch of them. Um, whatever kinds fit, latex, latex free, whatever you need. They're disposable, they're cheap, they're easy, they help keep you clean. While we were doing all this, pretty much working out of the garage, because we had all the stuff moved out of the house, we expected the water to be up to the roof. Luckily it wasn't. So we're cleaning all this muck and stuff, and we didn't have a whole lot of stuff in the truck with us, so we tried to wash up, get something to eat. Well, what do you do? You're dealing with stuff, cut it all up and down your arms. So what we're trying to do is using rinsed washer fluid. This has methyl alcohol in it. So stuff doesn't freeze. I mean, it's like a dollar for a jug. Use this, pour it on your hands, pour it on your arms. And I don't know if that was the best thing ever, but it definitely worked. Also use things like brake cleaner, carb cleaner, stuff to kill whatever was there. Eventually, after the second day, I believe, when we were cleaning stuff out, we got smart and just went and got some bleach, put it in five-gallon pails of water, and sanitized the hell out of it, and used that to wash up and stay clean. Bit cheaper, not as wasteful. So, 
in doing all this, you got to try to think of just think about what you did, what you do if you couldn't trust the water that came out of your faucet. Can't do dishes, can't wash clothes. We, we still were taking showers, but you didn't open your mouth or your eyes. When you got done, you wiped off some with baby wipes or got some Germax and just to make sure you were okay. It wasn't, you know, real bad and it wasn't off the, the water wasn't off color or anything, but you just you couldn't trust it. So in doing that, things again, like bottled water, city panned out water for a long time. We didn't bother with uh with trying to boil water or anything like that. We just kept buying it. Um drink pop, get juice, whatever, um, float in a cooler with ice. The ice came in from outside of town, so the ice was safe to use in the coolers and it wouldn't contaminate anything. So we kept a, we had a cooler in the truck and a cooler at the house full of food and water and other stuff to drink. We kept that the whole time, just so we'd have something to drink that was nice and cold. I mean, there, there were little... Um, it pretty much tried to cut... The river went right through town, right through the middle of town, of about 40,000 people, and it was hard to get back and forth. There were roads closed down. There was only a couple ways to get across the river to do stuff. So there were little, like, emergency grocery stores, different areas with, with food, water, you know, hygiene supplies, enough stuff to where you, you know, you wouldn't be hurting if, if you were able to get there. So shopping with what we could, um... Not getting stuff had to be washed, like not buying things like lettuce and fresh fruit because you couldn't really wash it unless you used water that you bought. So, I mean, there was canned food, frozen food, um, some fresh stuff. Like we had gone out and we'd gone fishing, you know, away from where the river and all the flooding was. And cooked fish and cooked deers in the freezer, all that good stuff. So, I just thought I'd share that with you, of dealing with a town with no water. Now, it wasn't SHTF, it wasn't WROL, people were actually really cool, everybody was frustrated, people lost their homes, dealing with all of that, losing all your worldly possessions and your house and everything, and being relocated. Um, my dad's house, like I said, the basement had sewage back up, but it wasn't flooded, it wasn't really damaged. Still to tear out the basement, and I believe he was out of the house um, staying with friends for probably two months, three months before he got back moved in. He had to redo his whole basement and put in, you know, replumb it, rewire it, all that good stuff. So, a lot of people just being cool with each other and you know, surviving a, a really bad event. I mean, and it's the same kind of thing happens with any kind of natural disaster or anything. I mean, you have floods, tornadoes, hurricanes, volcanoes, uh, wildfires, all this kind of stuff. I mean, you have your home. That's your castle. It's where you're comfortable. What would you do if you didn't have that? If you're able to get your stuff out and, you know, save your possessions and pictures and all that stuff, but living out of a hotel room or a spare room at a friend's house or out of your vehicle. Um, I mean, there were FEMA trailers and there were people at pop-up campers and there was all that stuff going on. People were, just were re re relocated for months because they lost their home. They had nowhere else to go. I mean, it's hard to plan for that, but just think about it. So, that's my story for today, guys. Hope you like it. Have any questions, let me know. Okay, guys. Almost forgot to give you some funny stories. So, when I was home, we, uh, I, sp I split my time between my dad's and my mom's house. They're divorced. Um, luckily, my mom lived far enough away where it wasn't, wasn't affected by the flood. So, went down to her place to go do laundry and hang out for a couple of days. But we had gone fishing, and I'll show you a picture of my really huge walleye. And we had gone fishing, but it was the right around the 4th of July, so it was just before that weekend. We went out on like a Friday. There was a couple of people at the lake, no big deal. Well, the next day I drove past that, the lake um, on the way to my mom's house, 
and I counted like 70 or 80 boats out on the lake, which is just ridiculous. So I'm really glad we went out the day before. We had the lake pretty much to ourselves. Okay, so we started pumping out our we pumped out our basement first. Um, once we got that pretty much down, took our sump pumps over the neighbor's house, good friends of ours, and started working on their basement. Now to get in, I had to squeeze my fat butt through a window to open up the porch door because the house was locked up because they were evacuated like we were. So they would kind of get into the house, semi break in. Um, to get things running, we'll run power cords from our generator over the fence to their yard. Got the sump pumps down in their basement, started pumping water out. So we're pumping it out. We don't have enough hose with the sump pumps. Only got, I think they came with like 15 feet of what looked like vacuum cleaner hose. It was about that same type of plastic y stuff. And so we got it wa running out the, the side window in the basement. And the problem is that with their house, uh, driveway slopes down to the yard from the street, so back of the house is a low spot. So the water wasn't really going anywhere. The water, if we could get out to the street, would still go into the storm drain because the quadrant of town that we were in, the dikes held because awesome guys built the dikes up and kept going, kept going, and kept our corner of town from flooding. So if we could get the water to the street, we could get it out of the house. So, in order to do that, Dad and I rigged up um, a redneck trough system uh, using sawhorses, lumber, and old rain gutters. So, we had this contraption running from the back of the house to the front of the house to get to the street. There's about, two, about a foot to two foot elevation change. So, we have this hose coming up around, railing on, the, on their porch duct tape and bungee corded in place so that it wouldn't fall back into the house and just pump the water out in a circle. Got into this trough out to the street working okay. And we found out later that there was, I don't remember exactly what it was anymore now. There was a there was some water that wasn't turned off. I don't know if it was a toilet a toilet that was running or something else. But our basement pumped out in like two or three hours and their basement didn't pump out for you know, that day. You know, the next day it still hadn't really pumped out. We found out that there was still water on, so we got the city to come by and turn the water off to the house, and then we were able to pump it out. But we had this contraption built up that I'm proud of, and I thought it was awesome, because it worked. It was dirty and completely redneck, but it worked. So, yeah, I flew home on vacation, or the 4th of July, this last summer, to become a refugee, we stayed at some friends' houses and bounced around to my mom's house and back, and it was a good time. I was home, took a bunch of toys out, went and shooting, went fishing. We still managed to have fun, even though the town was in a state of chaos. There was only, I'll try to throw in some video and other pictures I have, there was only really one way around town for a while. Everything else was closed off and accessible because dikes didn't hold or they're keeping roads open for National Guard and emergency and police vehicles. So to go from one side of the river to the other side of the river took about an hour and a half. Worse if you try to do it before, like on the way to or from work in the morning and afternoon it was real bad. So if you had to go to the store you try to do it not at peak times, um, later at night if you could, and get everything in one shot, best that you could. So then once you got back to wherever you were staying, you didn't have to go anywhere. But it was an eye-opening experience. It was the, the biggest disaster I've ever been in, um, which I consider myself fortunate for. But it definitely, you know, rocks your world a little bit. Like I said, we were lucky. We didn't lose the house. Um, had minor damage by comparison to some. Nothing that work and money wouldn't fix. Um, other people, their houses are pretty much total loss. All you could do was bulldoze it. Water up to the roof. Just terrible. All you can get is water. So probably nothing down that way right now. Not really, huh? Looks like, oh, that's a river. 
we get up here, you might be able to see the uh, country store supply where I buy my knives and stuff. I think they put a dike around it.